peeps, it's Jess Yell Dessert Geek, and today we are reviewing the Flip Crate. Now, I actually don't know much about this besides that it's probably Ube themed, because yet again, this is part of another exchange. So thank you to Patricia of My Year in Chocolate. I'll be putting her link and info down below because if you're into craft chocolate, you should totally be checking out her Instagram and blog. They're fantastic. And I sent her a ton of stuff because I was collecting it and she sent me this in exchange. So thank y'all. Which, speaking of surprises coming up, you should totally be hitting that like and subscribe button because there is totally a ton of random dessert action happening in the next few days. And you'll want to know what's coming because I know like Vlogmas right now, lots of stuff happening. You need the scoop. Let's open this guy up, eh? What have you got? A thing of cupcakes. <laughs> There's stuff in here, and then we have, ooh, we have peanut butter pulveron, which I'm gonna mispronounce, uh, yes, pulveron, which are just, they're kind of like cookie-like candy thing. Here, I can see them. There you go. I am not sure what to think of this. <laughs> We've got an ube white chocolate cookie. Uh, an macadamia, sorry, ube white chocolate macadamia cookie. Cool. So clearly we got a lot to go through. I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna comment both on the sea of the ingredients and their quality because you know, sometimes it's shipping isn't the kindest to baked goods. And I'm glad I just got that. It says these guys need to go in the microwave. So since I need to put these guys in the microwave, I will first eat the things that don't go in the microwave and then we'll get into these treats. Let's start with the cookie because I am just, wow. I mean, this is gonna be on the sweeter side, I feel like, with white chocolate and macadamia. I can see it being like a sweet, gentle note and then the ube kicking in. And I don't know how well this is coming up, I'm gonna be coming up in final edit, but the cookie is about the size of my palm. It is gently light purple. I swear it kind of smells like Play-Doh, like in that sweet, gentle almond extract -y kind of note. Give it a try. It just tastes like eating Play-Doh. It's a very chewy cookie and not in like a chewy soft cookie kind of way, more like a chewy doughy kind of way, like it was slightly undercooked. There was an ube note, but it felt more like I was eating a mashed up ube than really getting a cookie out of it. I wish it actually been a cookie, like a candy thing. Like, I feel like if it was fudge, I would really appreciate it. I wasn't feeling it as a cookie. Let's try the peanut butter pulveron. Oh, there's two flavors in here. So nice, always good combo. So we've got, we've got peanut pig, classic peanut pig pulveron, which Filipino peeps, if I'm mispronouncing something, please let me know in the comments below. I try to do my best, but nah, I'm human. I will say I wish these were easier to open. I, I, I do like that they're sealed, but they are kind of hard to tear apart. While I'm seeing this, I'd like to see ingredients somewhere. I haven't found an ingredient thing anywhere. And so at least having allergies would be kind of important. This should be a slightly crumbly, almost shortbready cookie, if I remember correctly. Here it is. Very exciting. That looks like a giant tablet. There's a slightly off buttery smell to it. There's a crisp, crispy country, kind of like eating small crystals or crispy bits of rice, and a roasty butteriness to it that is more of a caramelized note than the slightly off smell when I smelled it. It's really nice, like, I, it's definitely like a dense, crispy shortbread, but not super crispy, and there's a nice saltiness to it too. Let's try the peanut butter because I've never had peanut butter pulveron. Like, that just sounds fun. I also going back to allergies, there's a lot of things in Southeast Asian desserts that I personally can't do. But there's a lot of stuff involved, there's a lot of stuff involving caramelized egg yolk, especially in Thai desserts. And I just can't do it. It looks pretty and gorgeous and I want to eat it. Cause it looks kind of like cheese. And then I can't eat it. Oh, I can smell the peanut butter from here. So this guy is slightly darker, not by much. Still like, and we're in the, we're definitely in the category of tan still. Like, match on my skin tone kind of thing. Not quite, but it really smells of peanuts. So let's give this guy a shot. Much denser, but really all I'm tasting is like 
crispy crunchy peanut butter with kind of a creamy note at the end. I prefer the classic pinna pig for sure. The peanut butter kind of dominates the notes and it's nice. I feel like this is one you'd use to introduce people to the idea of this cookie, but only if they're not really into exploring flavors because I'm still liking the classic way better than this guy. It's still good and like it just, I want more salt or something to balance the peanut butter because it's very one note. Very, if you like peanut butter, you should try this guy. That, I'm gonna take all the other guys, throw them in the microwave and be right back. So first up, this is the Panda Coco, which has coconut all over it and just smells like eating pure coconut already. So we'll give it a shot. Super hopeful because coconut bread's awesome. Let's see, nice and fluffy. So the bread itself doesn't have a lot of flavor. It's a pretty basic, dense, yeasted bread by taste of things. Not much of yeasted flavor, but you know, just that dense dinner roll kind of flavor with the egg wash and then the coconut on top, giving you most of the flavor. And it's nice. I'm. Um, I like this toasted with butter is where I'm feeling. I'm not really feeling it as a side snack because it's so dense. Like, I feel like this is meant to be served alongside a stew or something where that dense bread can really sop up all the flavor and bring more to the table. Next we have the pan de ube, which looks like ube. I mean, this is gonna be purple. And look at that fluffy purple interior. Saw that coming, which means it's likely using ube powder because a lot of the ube on the market is only neon purple when it's powder form, as opposed to ground ube, which tends to be a lighter, more lavender or white tone. Smells like ube. That, that like sweet, that sweet almost floral note is there. So the ube bread. It is definitely a bit more fluffy. It actually ends up being a bit gummier when I'm trying to chew it, like it got stuck in the permanent retainer I have on my front teeth. But it's a very delicate ube flavor. It's not very intensely ube. I'd love it to be a little bit more, but this is closer to an actual snacking bread. I could definitely see having this one like with a cup of tea while doing studying. It's that kind of snackable bread. It's definitely not as fluffy as I prefer for my snacking rolls, but still nice little hearty roll, bit of a nice kick of flavor. Definitely prefer this guy over the coconut bread. Moving on. Okay. So now we're taking on the Ensimado. This is a classic. I admit from here on out, I'm a little bit apprehensive of doing the 10 second microwave requirements because it makes things kind of drippy, but we'll see. Oh dear, I'm, I'm kind of grody. Okay, so we're not really gonna get a shot here of the interior, I'm just gonna bite it. There's an almost cream cheesy sweetness to the frosting. Got a bit of grit, there's definitely some sugar still not fully incorporated in there, which is fine, it gives a nice crunch. The bread density itself is in between the two breads. I also wish I was a bit less of a mess. Just putting that out there. Meet the coconut ensimata. I feel like I'm eating bread cupcakes. Just smells of coconut, smells of pure straight up coconut. I can see why they want us to throw this in the microwave. It is a very dense bread and clearly benefits from a few seconds in the microwave. I'm just scared to do much to the frosting. Okay, ignoring that, it is very coconut. If you love coconut, like your bread, you're gonna like this. So this is the orange ensimata and I swear it smells like that orange sherbet pack you used to as a kid, like the 50 cent ones that had vanilla ice cream on one side and the cheap orange sherbet on the other. It smells like that. I love that it's got little bits that look like sprinkles on it. Well, let's give it a try. Tastes like it smells, just straight up like orange oil or orange essence with the bread. Last but not least, this is the Choc Nut and Samada. Um, it smells like milk chocolate. And not just any milk chocolate, like candy bar, milk chocolate. Give it a shot. I'm not tasting nearly as much chocolate as I expect. There's kind of a soft chocolatey note at the end, but it's very soft and subtle. This isn't for someone who wants pow chocolate. It's for some, 
It's for someone who wants chocolate, but they're, but they're bread. All right, let's talk about the flip crate. So first, thank you again, Trish, for sending me the box of goodies. It is much appreciated, and I'm glad I got to try it. Like, this was really cool to try. The best thing I tried were totally the Polvoron. Like, the original was really good, nice, crisp crunchiness, and really good flavor. I did feel like there were some shortcomings, which makes sense whenever you have a new box, you're learning, so totally cool. What I would like to see would be some kind of a brochure or something. Now, there might be one that just didn't show up in the box. That happens, that's totally normal, you know, we're all human. And if there isn't one, I'd like there to be one with the ingredients and information about the history of the items, because this feels like, as it is, an advanced box. It's for people who know what they want and they're gonna get it, and that's it. And for someone who's maybe a beginner but likes Ube because they had it in bubble tea, they're not gonna get quite what's going on because I didn't know about Polvoron, for example, until I went to Hood Famous's shop and got some, and that only happened last year. So if I, someone who's been caring about desserts for some time, only found out about them as a white person last year, someone who's beginning might have no clue what's going on here or why Ensamada's neat and why these flavors are cool. And I'd like to see I'd like to see this be something for the range of folks who might be interested in ordering it. I'm also surprised that I believe this was an Ube box that I was sent, and there's very little Ube in here. I'd like to see more with Ube, not just a cookie and a single bread. You know, it's I want to see more Ube. Bring me the Ube, drown me in Ube goodness, and give me an Ube breakfast fit for tea and royalty. And that's not what I want. That's not really what happened here, and I believe this was $75. So yeah, I, I mean, ignoring the shipping costs, I'd like to see that Ube happen. Heck, I would love to see Ube tea happen flip great. Could you make it happen? You should make it happen. That would be amazing, this whole Ube spread just sitting out there ready for me. That will be super cool. As it is, I feel like I'm seeing the beginning of a really cool trend of bringing more baked goods from more countries and more cultures to the masses. I think that is super cool. I just would like to have not just all Ensamada because they're just kind of dense baked goods and I'd like to have more variety. So I would love to hear from you now in the comments below. Have you tried the flip crate? If so, what'd you think? Or is there a favorite ube treat I need to try next because I'm always down for hunting out new desserts? And as always, I'm Jess Hale Dessert Geek, hoping that you get to go out and try all the things and hopefully get some ube in your life because it is really tasty. Later!